Hello, everyone, and welcome to the bi- Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Business Growth Made Easy podcast. I am so honored today to have one of my favorite industry icons, the beautiful Ann Mincy. Hello, Ann, and welcome. Thank you so much. And to you and to all who are going to be watching and listening, I am so honored to still be thought of in these ways, to share our knowledge and our experiences and to look to the future together. Because as my cup says, the best is yet to come. I and agree. So I believe that with all my heart. So thank you for the You're welcome. I am so honored. I am just so honored to have you. Um, I'll share with everyone right before the show. I was just telling Anne how I've been following her since I was maybe 17, 18 years old, um, and she had such an impact on me. I heard her speak once at a convention a long time ago, and it left such a positive impact on my career and on my life. So, Anne, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and, you know, what the beauty industry means to you, and and just give some words of wisdom, because you have so much wisdom to share. We all need that. It's a nice high-vibe energy. Thank you so much. And I invite you, Maria, to jump in at any point because I know that you have wisdom too. I wish we were all sitting around a big table with our coffee and we're able to share each other's stories because we all have a story and it's all brought us to this place. That's one of the things that I've been asked in the past, do you have any regrets? And I look back on my life and I just say, you know what? Every decision we've made, every place we've been, every speech we've given, every kiss we've shared, everything in our lives have brought us to this point. And we have lived through 100% of our worst days. And so today is a day to be celebrated and not to look back with regret, but to be grateful for all those experiences and people that have brought us to this moment. And from this moment on, we can make perhaps different, wiser, more humorous, more less serious, perhaps choices, lighthearted, lighthearted, exactly, so that we can truly be a light to those around us. My career with Redken started in a salon, not as a stylist, but as a receptionist. I was divorced early on from my college sweetheart. Daddy always said, if the bottom drops out, you can always come home. So I was in Oklahoma, moved back to Dayton, Ohio, and a friend from high school had just opened this very cool salon. And she said, why don't you just come and be our receptionist for a couple of days a week until you can kind of get your head straight on? (laughs) And so I did, and I fell in love with the atmosphere of a beauty salon. I loved the smells, I loved the sounds, I loved watching women and men come in and out, the burdens of the world on their shoulders when they entered the salon, and when they left, they were feeling free and alive, and I just thought, this is what I want to do. And our Redken representative came in one day and said, there's a job at Redken you'd be perfect for. And they were opening a new nutrition line Uh, selling vitamins and minerals and this is 1975 so we were way ahead of our uh, ahead of of the game of nutrition and wellness as we know now and I took um, an interview got the job being a sales rep for vitamins for Redken on the road and I lived on the road for two and a half years and then moved ultimately to California and at one point after about that time about three years in Paula Meehan, who owned the company, owned Redken, was the founder, said, we're going to eliminate the the nutrition, Nutrilon division. And I said, Paula, if you do that, I don't have a job. And this is the greatest influence probably in my life, besides my mother's prayers. Uh, Paula said to me, why don't you change your message from you are what you eat to you are what you think and start doing motivation and inspiration for stylists. And I think probably around that time, Maria, is when you and I connected because I began speaking to the heart of the hairdresser, the stylist, we call them now salon professionals. Um, and, And we just started saying, before you pick up your blow dryer every day, what have you done for yourself? How have you taken care of your body? What are you thinking? The only thing we really have control over is our thought. 
And there's so much out there today that are trying to steal our thoughts and we can't let that happen. And so I would say, what are you thinking? Um, What about your relationships? How about your money? What are you doing with your money? How are you earning it? How are you investing it? How are you giving it? How are you spending it? And most of all, what is your relationship with with God, because there's where it all begins. And so I started talking about these kinds of things from Redkin platforms, and it it was an invitation around the world. I think I've been to 28 countries where Redkin has been recommended and sold, um, have spoken to many different cultures and many different languages. Uh, using translators many of the times. I have seen Japanese opening their arms and hugging, which is not part of their culture. And I've made a couple of slips because some of the words we have in English, we would not use on an Australian platform. Like they don't translate. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they have different meanings. I know, I know, that's so funny. It is funny. But, you know, you get through those moments and you just say, we're human and we didn't know. And so we learned a lot about the different cultures around the world. Again, this is just stirring up such such deep energy and vibrations inside me because it's bringing me back to, yes, you know, when I was maybe 17, 18 and I heard you speak on that stage the first time in like Woodbridge, New Jersey, I think it was. You, sp- you, were, you were speaking of personal development. You were speaking of healing. You were speaking of working on ourselves at a time where it was no one, no one even had a concept of this. Yeah. And it did trigger something within me, which is, you know, something so powerful because it's just, it's my message. It's what I love. And I believe in working on ourselves and personal development and healing and mindset. So this is just, and today we're recording this for everyone listening or watching. This is August of 2021. We are, you know, one year out of lockdowns in the the United States, depends on where you're listening to, you know, you might still be in a different situation, but, you know, Anne and I really want to share the importance of your energy, your, your faith. You're believing in something bigger than you, the universe, uh, God, you know, your angels, whatever it is you want to call it, because it's not religious to me. It's about whatever resonates with you, your higher powers, mm-hmm. and, and how that will change your life. So, Anne, tell us a little bit, like, if, if there's mm-hmm. one thing you want to tell, like, the beauty industry and anyone who's maybe in a kind of a stuck mindset or just not feeling good enough or wherever it is that they might be in their journey. Cause guys, it's, it's okay. Wherever you're at, what, what would you suggest to them if they could do one thing for themselves today, once they finish listening to this podcast, what would that be? I think two words and that is pray first, whatever your prayer is enveloped around. I'm a Christian. I pray to God. Uh, Jesus is my hero. And so uh, when I'm in a situation, whether it's going into a broadcast like this, or whether it's uh, dealing with our family, if I don't know what to do and don't know what step to take and don't know what decision would be the right one, I just stop, pray first, and just ask, you know, what is the next direction you want for my life? And that actually happened to me in August of 2010. I was actually um, invited to take an early retirement from Redken, which I was happy and grateful to do. And I didn't know what I was going to do next. And now this is 11 years later. But in the middle of the night, I just felt like the spirit nudging and saying to me, if you think what you've accomplished is a big deal, you haven't seen anything yet, but I need for you to live a pure life. And, you know, I wasn't a scoundrel. I wasn't living on the edge. I I thought I was living as pure a life as I knew, but I got on my knees next to my bed and I said, okay, what is pure for me? What is pure for my body? How do you want me to treat my body? How should I rest? How should I exercise? How should I eat? What should I, what should I drink? How shall I move? And so exercise and, and physical um, care of this temple that we are 
invited to live in became a point of my prayer. And then I ask, please take care and guard my mind so that I don't go into the dark places. So I don't get caught up in the rhythm of the world, but I get caught up in the rhythm of, of pure life and joy and peace and love and generosity and creativity help me to think those kinds of thoughts. And then what is pure for my relationships? And how can I be open to others? And how can I reveal myself to others and allow others to reveal themselves to me? How can I give and how can I receive? I think it's difficult for women to very often allow ourselves to receive and receive graciously. And then I ask, what is pure for my money? And then basically, what is pure in my relationship to you, to God? And so a month after I got on my knees and prayed that, that prayer, a former classmate of mine from college, whom I had seen a year before at our 40th class reunion, his wife had passed away of breast cancer, and he was a, at home alone at night, grieving, and he felt the nudge of, again, the spirit speaking to him, saying, you know, Max, Rebecca's not coming back. You've got to go on with your life. And he took his wedding ring off and put it on the, on the stand next to his bed. And he said, okay, now what? And the next morning, he felt the spirit nudge saying, what about that lady that was the MC of your class reunion, which was me? And he said, Lord, I don't know anything about her. We never had a conversation in college. We didn't really know each other. But he Googled me and he found me, Redken, vice president, global communications, New York City. And he was sitting in his home in a small logging town in Malala, Oregon. And he started laughing and he said, oh yeah, right, Lord. You want me out here in Malala, Oregon to contact a vice president in New York City to have a conversation. And he wrestled with that and he fought back and forth and he fought those doubting feelings and thoughts that he had in his mind. Yeah. The what ifs and all of that, you know, the fighting that we do. Yeah. And finally, he just wrote all of this out for me and we pushed the send button and I got this Facebook from him, this message. And I'm sitting there reading this message from Max Jatan and I wrote him right back and I I said, I'm an independent woman who walks alone on the planet. But I remembered the prayer that I had prayed a month before this, that I was willing to have a pure life. And here was this man Facebooking me on the prompting of what he believed was the Holy Spirit. And I wrote him, I wrote him and I said, I'm an independent woman who walks alone on the planet, but I sympathize with you and the loss of your wife. And if there's anything I can do for you, I'm here for you. And I pushed the send button. Nine months later, I was walking down the aisle of the church that he was a pastor of. And I became married, became a mother, and got my Medicare card all in the same year. And I've been living in Oregon as a pastor's wife and as a mother and grandmother. And um, it's just been a glorious path of purity. And that's really where I think all of this started. When you ask me, what would you do first when I'm faced with any situation? Oh. Um, just give it up, lay it down, turn it over and say, I don't know. You've got to help me. And ask your higher the, power for help. The just promise for is, help. yes, the promise is there. Yeah. You ask and it will be heard and received. So that would be my very first piece. And then rest. Um, breathing is, it, it's powerful. The breath is life. And we very often, because we're living in this whirlwind of a life right now, we're breathing at about the upper third of our lung capacity. And so we're not filling our bodies with the joyful oxygen and life-giving blood that it needs. Yeah. And so it's no wonder that we're thinking at just a, a minimum amount of space that we have to think, or we're, we're our activities, we're trying to push our way and, and do so much, but our bodies need the breath. And so I feel very 
um, confident that after we stop and ask for help, that the next thing we, knew, we need to do is just physically stop, take a breath, filling our, why don't we do that right now? Okay. You just, you, we just into it. I was like, I was about to say that. Let's do it together. Let's Guys, do it. if you're watching this, you can watch how we're going to take a deep breath and we're just going to align ourselves to, to God, to source. Yes. Again, whatever resonates with you. Yeah. You all, I just want to share something and I'm sure Anna will agree with me. You all have the power to connect yes. to your higher power. You all yes. have your gut, your soul your intuition, whatever it is you want to call it, we all have this God-given birthright to connect and ask for help. And your breath will help you do that. If yes. you're just listening, then just stop for a moment. If you're driving or wherever you may be, just make sure you're safe when you do this exercise. And Anna and I are going to do some breath work together. Go ahead, Anne. You lead. Wonderful. We'll just start with one simple, long, slow, deep breath. And then I'll give you one or two additional uh, breath exercises that are also very powerful. First, just if you want to close your eyes or lower your eyelids, we know that that's an action that will re uh, relax the entire body. And so we simply take in a deep breath in through our nose, hold at the top just for a moment, and then release through your mouth as if you're blowing out a candle. Let's do that one one more time. In through your nose. Hold. And blow out your candle. And now here's an exercise that they actually teach to SWAT teams and military. It's the count of four. So you count in your inhale to the count of four. Hold to the count of four. Breathe out to your count of four. Hold to the count of four. So it's four, 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 four. Let's do it again. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Hold. And then one more exercise that I particularly love very often when we're in our business mind, we're in the left brain. I think all of you know that's the logical, sequential uh, side of the brain, thinking brain. And the right brain is our creative and progressive side. And so sometimes we get too heady and sometimes we get too out there, creative or whatever. And so what we want to do is be able to have a way, a breath, to be able to balance the two sides of our brain. Yep, and so exactly an alignment. And so this is called alternate nostril breathing. And we used to do it with our finger and thumb, but now we can just visualize doing it. So I'll need for you to close your eyes. And we're going to breathe in, just visualize that you're breathing in your right nostril. Just breathe in. And then breathe out your left nostril. Visualize breathing in your left. Breathing out your right. Let's do two more rounds. In to the right. Out to the left. One more on your own, in the left, and out the right. Let's just sit in that for a moment. If you've closed your eyes or lowered your eyelids, you can lift them now. And the beauty of this is that when we are up in the morning, the alarm goes off, we get ready to go to do our daily, whatever it is we're doing. We have family, we have concerns, we have health issues, we have financial issues. All of that is stirring up adrenaline in our system to where we're living with a chronic level of adrenaline. And what the yogis have known for 5,000 years and what we have just done is that the breath is an 
is a, a an action we can take mm -hmm. that actually neutralizes the adrenaline. It's that fight or flight. Right. So it actually, and I, I speak of this often, it mm -hmm. physiologically, physiologically, like it, it, it's, it, this is science. Okay. Connected yes. with, with spirit. Yes. It stops that anxiety. Yes. It realigns your energy. It realigns your body. So you can get step out of that fight or flight. Yes. And I believe in it because I've been practicing it for years and I agree 150%. Great, great, great. great. Yeah. And I believe that in the salon, in between guests, you finish a guest, she looks great. She looks in the mirror and says, I can't believe this is my hair. I love my hair. And you go back into your break room or if you can go outside, but just take a moment in between guests yeah. to clear your palate, to clear your, your screen, to clear your energy and the energy you've picked up from them. And the way you can do that is through this kind of breath work. So just one juicy, long, slow, deep breath. The four, 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 the box four is what we call that breath. And the alternate nostril breath will help to balance all of that out and you come back in and you take your next guest back to your chair and now you have a brand new environment really because the energy that we're spreading they've been able to measure that it goes out six to eight feet Absolutely. from our bodies right and so whatever we're feeling in our mind and heart is being felt even though we may not say a word mm -hmm. so if we're troubled Everyone around us is going to feel those vibes, if you will. And breath work is one of the most important things that we can do to bring that energy to a positive place because you are the light of your world. And Absolutely. people are starving for light these days. They want light. And we're so, here to share the light. Yes. And yeah. again, I think this is one of the simplest gifts of self-love we can give to ourselves. Mm -hmm. For anyone in the beauty industry, all my beautiful salon professionals that are listening here, no matter where you're at in, the, in, your, in your journey, this is critical to add into your daily rituals, like brushing your teeth, washing your face, mm -hmm. and all the other fun stuff that we do daily, or we should be doing daily. <laughs> right. So, Honor your soul, honor your light, and remember, it's free. We free. all have access 24 seven. You can help yourself at any time and you can actually start working and healing yourself. And you've been amazing. You've been a blessing and a gift. Um, if anyone wants to talk to you, are you open? Are you connecting with people? Like, do you have a Facebook page? Or you could just, you know, we'll do any, we're going to drop everything below. Anne will give me her contact info if there's anything that you'd like to share with her personally. Um, we'll put everything in the show notes below or above this video, below the podcast. And as always, guys, remember, working on yourself, your own personal development, your connection to God, source, and your breath is huge in creating more profits with less stress, especially in the beauty industry. Yes. And I want to thank you for your gift, for your light, for being with me today. I, I love you very much. Thank you. Love you too. Bye-bye.